In this lecture, we are going to talk about mass transfer in Taylor flow. As we have seen that the Taylor flow or segmented flow or what we also call slug flow, this can occur in gas liquid flow in micro channels or liquid liquid flow in micro channels. So, uh, we will try to cover both the uh, uh, mass transfer or mass transfer for gas liquid mass transfer and liquid liquid mass transfer. Additionally, uh, the reactions which are catalytic in, catalytic in nature and require a solid catalyst in many instances the channel wall is coated with a layer of the catalyst. So, we have a gas liquid solid or liquid liquid solid uh, mass transfer also happening in such cases. So, uh, we will cover all such cases here. One might try to have an analogy between the gas liquid heat transfer where uh, the heat transfer is happening from wall to the liquid and to the gas phase or from wall to the liquid uh, uh, that is continuous liquid and the dispersed droplet phase. Similarly, when we have solid liquid gas mass transfer or three phase mass transfer, then there is interaction or there are mass transfer resistances in between uh, gas and liquid phase and liquid and solid phase as well as gas solid or uh, phase via, via the th thin film that surrounds these bubbles. Okay. So, it is uh, it will be good to have an analogy and try to have a unified model which can be tailored according to the mass transfer heat transfer need. Okay. Uh, so, uh, because this course I am not sure how many of you are from the chemical engineering background and in the chemical engineering background also uh, uh, to understand everything in this course one need to have a background in fluid mechanics, heat transfer and mass transfer. So, we are going to revise some of the basics of mass transfer to start with and then we will look at the specific details of mass transfer in uh, Taylor flow regime. So, mass transfer is basically transfer of a solute from one phase to another. It can be in a single phase also, but what we are talking about that the how, how the solute is distributing in the bulk of the liquid. So, that can be the mass transfer for uh, in a single phase, uh, but what we are talking about mass transfer between gas liquid or liquid liquid phases. So, uh, mass transfer is generally driven by the uh, concentration gradients or uh, to put it more specifically in thermodynamic from thermodynamic point of view mass transfer occurs because of the chemical potential uh, gradient in chemical potential. So, uh, it can have uh, as we can see here that it can be the transfer of solute from one fluid to another or for example, absorption of gas in the liquid phase or dissolving of a fluid in another which is uh, what uh, I was talking about the absorption of gas in the liquid phase and it can accompanied it can be accompanied with chemical reaction or uh, it can be accompanied with chemical reaction or it can happen without chemical reactions. So, without chemical reactions some of the examples are say for example, gas absorbed uh, in, in a liquid. So, for example, CO2 absorption in water or CO2 absorption in amines or, or sodium hydroxide for that matter and uh, uh, number of uh, liquid liquid extraction examples are there, then uh, drying and distillation. So, uh, drying is also a form of mass transfer, uh, it is the evaporation and then uh, or the, or the uh, taking out the moisture from uh, one phase and then uh, distillation. Then uh, mass transfer with chemical reactions. So, there are number of chemical reactions, some of those are uh, uh, say halogenation 
polymerization and nitration to name a few. Okay. So, uh, in conventional uh, chemical engineering or uh, in the industrial practice, a different a number of contactors or reactors are used. So, there are two terms here where we, as we see here contactors and reactors. Basically, they can be used interchangeably. The difference in the naming is because when there is only contact between the phases, but there is no reaction. So, there is no point in calling this as a reactor and we term it as contactor. And when there is reaction involved, then we call this as a reactor. So, uh, different uh, reactors have been used or are being used in the industry and more and more uh, reactors where the process can be intensified, process intensification can happen, a uh, number of different reactors are being developed with such a purpose. So, for example, a stirred tank reactor, in the stirred tank reactor uh, by the stirrer or by the motion of the stirrer, it can be uh, a, a different kind of stirrer can be present there. So, uh, they induce uh, mixing of the two phases, one or the dispersed phase is uh, broken down into smaller droplets or smaller bubbles and uh, that gives larger interfacial area and the reaction between the two happens. Bubble column reactor, in the bubble column reactor uh, a number of variations of bubble column reactor are present. So, in a column of liquid which may be stationary or which may be also flowing. So, it depending on that it will be a continuous uh, gas liquid reactor or semi batch reactor in which one phase is stationary or in the batch mode and the other phase gas is moving through the column. So, in the bubble column reactor basically in a column of liquid the gas is introduced it can be introduced at the bottom it can be introduced from the top and uh, that the the bubbles when they are introduced the number of uh, bubbles are generated. Uh, there may be million of bubbles and then they have uh, a plume bubble plume generated large interfacial area. In addition they also cause the mixing in the uh, liquid phase. So, large interfacial area mixing and they are used for number of industrial applications. Then uh, packed bed reactors. So, in the packed bed reactor as the name uh, denotes that in a column the, mm, the void is filled with the, uh, a solid bed for a catalytic reaction this might be catalytic or it might be a, a, a packed bed that may be a static bed it may be a fluidized bed. So, uh, on the surface of these catalysts the reaction happen and then uh, the voids they uh, they cause the reaction between the different phases for example, trickle bed reactor. Uh, now, uh, next example is plate or tray columns for example, distillation column where there are the, the plate uh, segment the different sections of the column and mass transfer happens at each stage in uh, between two plates and so on. Then film reactors, so in film reactors basically generally used for uh, gas liquid reaction or gas liquid purposes where a continuous liquid film flows on the wall of the channel and gas flows through it. So, uh, the reaction happen at the gas liquid interface and there are a number of other variations of these reactors uh, conventionally. So, uh, the contacting pattern in these reactors may be by bubbling as we have seen in bubble column or a film reactor or uh, filming or a spraying. So, by, by spraying the small droplets uh, uh, the mass transfer can happen uh, say for example, for the uh, when, when the drying of uh, milk uh, formation from milk to milk powder this kind of reactors are used and uh, say uh, another application can be the coating of uh, uh, different pharmaceutical granules etcetera. Okay. Uh, so, then uh, distributing two phase flow streams. So, uh, devising the ways by which 
uh, the two phase flow stream can be mixed or the turbulent structure or the mix mixing structure in the fluids can be created. So, there can be different uh, contacting patterns and the reactors can be classified based on these contacting patterns. So, contact between the phases is important because uh, the mass transfer between the two phases happens uh, by the interface. So, it is important to have a large interfacial area. Okay. So, that is where we have uh, micro channels coming into picture. Now, when we talk about reactions or uh, for, for reactions, uh, especially uh, reaction in multi-phase, then uh, there can be two kind of kinetics or two extremes of kinetics in one case where uh, the reaction kinetics is slow, in another case uh, the reaction kinetics is very fast and uh, rest is in between the two limits. So, uh, because for the reaction to happen, the gas and liquid or liquid liquid or the phases which are to react, they should come into contact first. So, there are two kind of resistances in this case, one is the resistance for the reaction. So, we can say that uh, 1 over the reaction rate that can be the the reacts uh, the resistance by the kinetics and the resistance by the mass transfer. Now, as we know then when there are uh, reactions in chain, then the slowest step or which have the smallest rate will be the rate limiting step. So, if the reactions are slow or moderately slow, then mass transfer will not be a problem because the phases will mix and then there will be enough time for the reaction to happen. However, if the reaction is fast, when the reaction is fast as soon as the two phases come into contact reaction will happen and the rate of the reaction will be limited by the mass transfer. So, in such cases where the reaction rate is limited by the mass transfer which will happen where the reaction chemistry or reaction kinetics is very fast the overall rate is controlled by mass transfer. And as we know that micro reactors have very large interfacial area density. So, per unit volume they have very high interfacial area. So, that is where micro channels or micro reactors can provide intensification to the process can be used as a tool for intensification for increasing. Uh, the efficiency or the performance, yield, selectivity of the reactions with fast kinetics. Additionally, in the conventional reactors, most of them it is not possible to control the bubble or droplet size precisely. For example, take a bubble column reactor, you have a sparger and the gas is coming from it the bubbles will be generated depending on the local fluid condition, the size of the bubbles at the center and at the corner near the wall will vary. Now, these bubbles will interact with each other and they will coalesce or break up and the, there will be a size distribution of bubbles which can vary an order or more. So, it is very difficult to get an accurate idea of the interfacial area density in such cases. And there will be non-uniformities. So, uh, it is very difficult to have control over the precise control over the happenings that are happening in the reactor. So, in such cases, say Taylor flow regime, where we have bubbles of a you uh, um, uh, bubbles of a size or a particular size, we can generate or control the size of the bubble or size of the droplet and the reaction can happen continuously in uh, the uh, size of uh, in uh, these regular size bubbles or the uniform bubble sizes. So, we can have a very precise control over the happenings or over the activities that can happen in the in a micro reactor. So, that is uh, advantage of micro reactors. So, we are here we have listed down the different uh, uh, advantages uh, or uh, issues uh, that are relevant to micro reactors. 
So, in micro reactors we have interfacial area to be large just to, uh, to remind ourselves if the channel size is 1 meter uh, a, in area over volume is 1 of the order of 1 and for 1 meter and if this becomes 1 millimeter then the same number becomes 10 raised to the power 3. If it becomes 0.1 mm the same number will become 10 raised to the power 4. So, as compared to 1 we can get interfacial area of 10 raised to the power 4 in micro reactors. So, of course, a uh, lot of uh, advantage in terms of interfacial area and then uh, avoiding heat hot spot formation. So, when the reaction is exothermic and large amount of heat is being generated during the reaction, then uh, uh, where the reaction happening in these zones uh, the, the high uh, temperature may occur and the hot spot may form. So, uh, in micro reactors as we have discussed in the previous lectures the heat transfer one can precisely control the temperature in the reactors. So, uh, one can avoid the hot spot formation and uh, it is also easier to or uh, to carry out these exothermic reactions safely uh, in micro reactors. Then, uh, one can handle uh, specially the hazardous materials or specialty chemicals, fine chemicals which cost a lot. So, uh, these coming especially in the pharmaceutical industry or, uh, or consumer goods industry. Uh, uh. So, in these cases uh, one can uh, work with because the micro channels size is small. So, one can work with small quantities and mitigate the risk of handling hazardous materials. In the specialty chemicals one can work with smaller uh, nanoliter or uh, picoliter size of the droplets and carry out the reactions and uh, find out the um, I mean do the analytical chemistry or whatever uh, formulations or the reactions are to be done especially in pharmaceutical applications one can do. So, micro reactors are useful there. Then uh, the obvious question will come that all this is fine, but micro reactor is for the same reason that it, it, it handles very small amount of volume. So, how do we scale this up? So, scaling up micro reactors I will again give the example of same uh, printed circuit heat exchangers that we talked about in the heat transfer case. So, the same concept where a sheet of metal it can have channels etched straight channels or mandiering or uh, tortuous channels uh, etched on this plate it the number of channels may be 1000 and then stack those plates together. So, one has 1000 micro reactors or hundreds of micro reactors and then hundreds of these plates, plates stacked up together. So, if, if one can distribute the gas and liquid phases or liquid liquid phases or whatever the liquids one is working with uniformly in these micro channels then the scaling up can be achieved without really changing the size of the channel. So, the scaling up, achieve, scaling up in micro reactors is achieved by numbering up the channels by numbering up the units that we are working with working with rather than scaling up the uh, reactor from lab scale to pilot scale to the industrial scale. So, in uh, with the uh, with these promises of uh, chemical microprocessing or micro reactors uh, a number of uh, applications or number of uh, uh, researchers has uh, focused on understanding the uh, mass transfer, chemical reaction, reaction engineering in uh, these micro reactor channels in past two decades not only uh, from the academic world, but from the industry and some of those uh, uh, has started to come up in the uh, industrial production also. So, uh, say for example, in the pharmaceutical industry 
the impetus has been to use micro channels for the uh, continuous production because in the most of the reactors that are used in the pharmaceutical industry they are batch reactors so uh, and batch reactors they have its own disadvantages so it will be advantageous to convert these processes into continuous processes but the volume that is handled in these reactors may not be high or in these industries may not be high or they need to use the same system for different processes so this can be easily achieved using micro reactors and this has been or this is being uh, increasingly explored by the pharmaceutical industry okay so coming back to micro reactors uh, especially for gas liquid or liquid liquid flow uh, kasid and minisker uh, i think i have uh, a spelling mistake here so kasid and minisker they divided the micro mixers into uh, or micro channels or micro reactors into three different categories based on the contactic principles micro mixers micro channels and falling fall film reactors so in the micro mixers some of the examples are mixer settler or inter digital mixer or cyclones so they can also have static internals so which gives rise to chaotic mixing or in micro channels where the mixing is basically either by diffusion or convection so one can have say different kind of uh, y shaped channels or t shaped channels or uh, micro packed bed reactors channels with mesh or membrane contactor the other option is uh, falling film micro reactor so in this case a liquid film falls uh, on the walls of the channel and the gas is flowing uh, either from the bottom or from the top uh, so uh, these are three different uh, categorization uh, for micro reactors and now uh, we will look at uh, some generic features of the mass transfer models now there can be or there are two different kind of models because one need to look at the mixing within the phase itself uh, once the transfer through the interface has happened then uh, the the solute or the liquid or the gas phase will mix in the liquid phase so that comes under macro model so that is mixing within a phase and then uh, before that when the mixing happens at the interface one need to look at mass transfer between the phases so different micro models what what are called what are these called mass transfer between phases at the interface uh, the models developed are called micro models so looking at the micro models which which are specific to two phase flows uh, there are different uh, models that are being used so the first one is stagnant film model so it assumes that there is a at the interface there is a stagnant film which is imaginary 
so this film i don't really exist but the assumption is that this film and in this stagnant film the mass transfer proceeds via molecular diffusion uh, just next to the interface and uh, the remaining fluid remains well mixed so one has the concentration gradient here and then it is well mixed that is what the assumption in the stagnant film is so the mass transfer coefficient in the stagnant film kl in the second phase uh, is given as d where d is the diffusivity or molecular diffusivity or molecular diffusivity divided by delta interface so the thickness of this interface one can also look at the units the unit of d is meter square per second and the unit of delta is meter so the mass transfer unit in this case is meter per second uh, so it because this is an imaginary uh, layer surrounding the liquid so the question in such models generally come what is the thickness of this film so a stagnant film model requires uh, uh, to determine or it is uh, required to determine the thickness of this film another uh, approach that is used is called penetration model and this is due to higby and so in this basically uh, what it suggested that each liquid elements take the same time in contact with the fluid or each element of surface so surface means the interface so consider a bubble that is rising in the liquid so a liquid element will come in contact with this bubble at this point and then it will move on the interface of the bubble and then eventually will leave the so uh, what the assumption of penetration model is that liquid at the interface is continually being renewed so at one point there was one molecule of liquid but the next time it moves here and another liquid come here so one molecule of liquid or one liquid particle or fluid particle will remain in contact with the interface for a certain time and then it will be uh, it will leave the liquid so this liquid is being continuously replaced by new liquid so what they have suggested that the mass transfer coefficient is proportional to the square root of diffusivity divided by pi theta where theta is the exposure time or contact time of the liquid with the gas phase now uh, this approach seems to be more realistic for dynamic system uh, where the the bubble or the dispersed phase or there is a relative velocity between the two phases it has been suggested that the choice of the penetration model and film model can be determined by a non dimensional number called fourier number which is defined as the ratio of diffusive or molecular diffusion divided by the storage rate so molecular diffusion is uh, given by the diffusivity or molecular diffusivity and storage rate is uh, the length scale so for a channel it will be the channel radius 
or diameter and uh, r square over tau. So, tau is a typical time scale. So, the ratio of this is known as Fourier number and if the Fourier number is less than 1 that means the diffusion rate is smaller than the storage rate then it is uh, suggested to use the penetration model. If it is other way around that if the diffusion rate is high then uh, one can assume the film to be stagnant and use the stagnant film model. So, uh, there are uh, versions in which one uses a combination of film and penetration theory. So, there are number of other uh, theories uh, that can be based around this or further modification to these theories. Now, uh, consider the mass transfer at an interface. So, if this is the interface between two phases. And if we consider that there is considerable resistance on both sides of the interface, so we uh, plot the films surrounding this and this is delta i n t 1 we can call in phase 1 and this is delta i n t 2 in phase 2. The Concentration in phase 1 is C 1 and partial pressure in this phase is P 1 and that decreases to the uh, uh, a concentration let us call this as uh, C 1 star or P 1 star. And then uh, in the second phase the concentration is C 2 and the interface the concentration is C 2 at the interface. So, at equilibrium and steady state the mass transfer through interface 1 the, the rate of mass transfer from phase 1 to phase 2 will be equal. So, the rate of mass transfer uh, will be equal. So, what is given as, is as k g 1 p 1 minus p 1 interface star is equal to k g 2 c at the interface minus C 2. Now, uh, we need to relate this the P 1 into star and C 2 into star and so this is given by Henry's law. It suggests that C 2 is equal to H P 1 star interface. So, where H is called and reach constant for this is for gas liquid systems for liquid liquid H is replaced by K and K is called partition coefficient. So, uh, some more basics about the mass transfer the the reactor because the mass transfer is a function of mass transfer coefficient as well as the interfacial area. So, the reactor performance is generally given as K multiplied by 
uh, interfacial area density. So, it may be uh, say K gas to liquid interfacial area gas to liquid. So, uh, a specific interfacial area that is interfacial area per unit volume meter square per meter cube K has unit of meter per second. So, the total unit will be uh, meter per second divided by meter. Now, uh, some non-dimensional numbers. So, Sherwood number is an analog to Nusselt number in heat transfer. So, the Nusselt number in heat transfer if you remember H A it is convection over diffusion or conduction H D over K. Similarly, Sherwood number is K D over capital D or uh, so where uh, D is a length scale and K is the mass transfer coefficient and D is diffusivity. Schmidt number is an analog to Prandtl number in heat transfer. So, Prandtl number is alpha Cp mu over K. So, that is uh, nu over alpha and Schmidt number is defined as nu over d where nu as you will know that mu over rho. So, and the d is the molecular diffusivity both of the, them have unit meter square per second. So, alpha is thermal diffusivity which is defined as k over rho C p. d is molecular diffusivity or mass diffusivity and nu is momentum diffusivity. Another important uh, non-dimensional number which is relevant during the uh, reactions which gives a ratio of or Hatta number square is a ratio of diffusion time to the reaction time. So, T d is diffusion time and T r is the reaction time. So, this is important when we have uh, react mass transfer coupled with uh, reactions. Now, uh, when the experiments are conducted, uh, different methods are used to measure the mass transfer. So, mass transfer will be basically measured by measuring the concentrations either locally or at the inlet and outlet. So, every time we want to do the uh, there are two different methods one is offline method. So, for the offline method one take a sample or one has the known concentration at the inlet and then the concentration at the outlet has to be determined. So, because it is multiphase flow. So, we have to or we might need to determine the uh, concentration uh, in the two phases and we need to separate the two phases. So, one need to look at a, a phase separation method and this phase separation has to be quick because uh, uh, the reaction times or the contact time in micro reactors is short. So, uh, if the separation time is longer then the accurate results will not be obtained. So, uh, the phase separation has to be quick. One of the natural way to do it uh, separation of different betability of the liquid to the channel wall. Uh, so, that will require lot of understanding of the interface or the, uh, or the wettability behavior of liquid different liquids with the channel wall. Okay. So, some of the efforts has uh, gone in this direction. The other challenge is that because what we know is the concentration at the inlet. So, to because as a channel for example, if one uses a T junction channel, then uh, 
the changes in the concentration just before they mix and when this happens. So, the mass transfer will be very high in this region. So, we will not be able to get the mass transfer in the fully developed region or where the hydrodynamics has well developed and a structured pattern has been obtained. So, uh, one of the options people have looked at that they have divide, uh, devised two channels. In one case, they study uh, uh, the mass transfer in the entire length of channel and in the another case uh, the mass transfer is studied just in the uh, inlet section. So, that one can know how much mass transfer or what mass transfer has taken place in this inlet section and then uh, subtract it from the total mass transfer. And of course, once this sample has been obtained at the outlet it has to be analyzed. Uh, using uh, different analytical techniques, chromatographic, chromatographic or spectrometric analysis. In the online measurement, most of these online measurement techniques, uh, which means that the concentration is being measured uh, as the fluids move in the channel. So, these online measurement techniques, most of them are based on the optical measurements. So, for example, uh, one can take the pictures if uh, for example, gas liquid uh, flow is happening and CO2 is being ab absorbed in NaOH, then uh, the concentration of or the, the size of the bubbles will change because the CO2 is being dissolved in the phase. So, as one move from the inlet to the outlet, the size of bubble will keep reducing. So, if one can take the image of the channels at different lengths, then one will have by estimating the size of the bubbles, one can have an idea about the mass transfer that has happened from gas phase to the liquid phase. So, uh, the other option is to use uh, different indicators, uh, say for example, pH indicators which can monitor the color change. So, uh, by uh, monitoring the change of the color at different lengths, one can uh, uh, make an estimate of the change in concentration. Uh, a relatively uh, recent, but very promising technique is LIF or liquid induced fluorescence, where dyes, fluorescent dyes are available, which are sensitive to the concentration. So, these concentration sensitive dyes are introduced and uh, um, by the laser light, the reflected light is uh, the intensity of the reflected light or the uh, is uh, uh, read by the images and then uh, an estimate of the concentration field can be made. So, now coming to mass transfer in the Taylor flow regime, it is extensively used in most of the mass transfer applications in micro channels for gas liquid or liquid liquid flow, uh, Taylor flow regime or the segmented flow is one of the most popular flow regime in which people work with. Uh, because it provide interfacial area which is large as well as which is well defined interfacial area. Another uh, advantage of this is that the axial dispersion is reduced. For example, if we have a bubble and two slugs surrounding the bubble and there is very little interaction, almost no interaction between slug 1 and slug 2. So, uh, there is no dispersion. We can treat these uh, two streams separate with each other and there is no uh, interaction between two streams. So, there is no uh, axial dispersion for these two streams uh, and this has intense mixing. So, if number of bubbles are in, uh, you can think of these number of slug reactors in series which will eventually be a plug flow reactor. And then of course, the diffusion lengths are small and there is uh, internal recirculations. So, the radial mixing is also enhanced. Another question which might come in general in all of us, uh, uh, we can have this question that the bubbly flow regime, the size of bubbles is very small. So, 
why not use bubbly flow regime where one can use or where one can get very high interfacial area. And uh, bubbly flow regime has been classified uh, in different literature uh, from small bubbles, they are also called bubbly flow regime or spherical bubbles or almost a spherical bubble which occupy the entire channel, they are also called bubbly flow regime. So, this will be the case when the volume fraction is small and there is very small. So, in this case the interfacial area will be smaller. If we have high gas hold up, one may have uh, smaller bubbles, interfacial area may be high, but again no control on the bubble or droplet size, flow might be unstable and then there is uh, if the it is catalytic reaction then the diffusion, diffusion lengths will be larger. So, one uh, the, the most attractive flow regimes in micro channels is Taylor flow regime. The annular flow regime because again uh, if it is liquid liquid flow one can have parallel flow and uh, can have the interaction between the phases. But for the gas liquid flow the annular flow is generally unstable, there are instabilities present on the interface. So, that can be a problem for a number of cases. So, mass transfer in Taylor flow, there can be number different type of problems that one may want to study or different applications can be there. So, one is that there is mass transfer between the gas and liquid phases, another one is mass transfer between gas, liquid and solid catalytic wall and this mass transfer can be with or without reactions. Okay. So, uh, the mass transfer mechanism in such cases will be uh, can be complicated. So, let us look at the mass transfer where the six some, uh, systems have a reaction on the channel wall. So, if we have a solid wall and a Taylor bubble into it. So, there are two paths for mass transfer from gas to for the gas to go to the solid. One is via liquid slug. So, the gas interacts from these caps with the liquid slug and then slug moves to the uh, from the slug the gas comes in contact with the solid phase. So, the first uh, contact is gas liquid mass transfer at the interface via the front and rear bubble caps and then transfer of dissolved gas molecules. So, the gas that has dissolved it transfer from here to the wall. The other path is via the wall. So, it goes uh, via the uh, film. So, the gas dissolves in this uh, liquid film and then from film it moves towards the wall. Generally, this film is almost a stagnant. So, it is uh, uh, one can use the stagnant film model there. This is uh, thought to be a dominant mechanism, especially when the bubble is longer than the interfacial area of the film region will be large compared with the interfacial area at those caps. However, in some cases if this liquid film becomes saturated, uh, then there will be no mass transfer uh, via the liquid film. So, one need to look into all these cases. Now, for systems with reaction on the channel wall, so what we have looked at is gas to solid mass transfer. Now, another important mass transfer that one need to look at from liquid to solid. So, that will basically be in the slug phase uh, the liquid interacts with the solid. So, again uh, though there is only one liquid, but as we know from the hydrodynamics that this have liquid slugs on it. and surrounding the slug there is a thin film. 
of liquid. So uh, one can take two resistances in series, the first resistance, the mass transfer when it is circulating in this uh, bulk and then transport through the film. So uh, what we have uh, looked at is mass transfer in case where there is gas, solid, liquid system and reaction is happening. When there is no reaction on the channel wall, then one just need to look at the mass transfer. So the steps at the wall are no longer important, but we still have the mass transfer uh, via caps and the film in this case. So uh, if we have say CO2 absorption in NaOH or CO2 absorption in water, then the bubbles will be in contact with the so the gas liquid mass transfer from the cap regions and the gas liquid mass transfer from the film region. So uh, one can write that the total gas to solid mass transfer or K let us say GLS into AGLS will be equal to there are two parallel steps that the mass transfer happens via the liquid film and mass transfer via cap. So for this we can write K G S A G S plus there are two steps in series. So for which we can write this uh, the steps in series uh, that mass transfer via A K G L AGL plus 1 over K LS ALS. So, we can draw a schematic of it. So, things become clearer. We have a bubble here and what is called GS is gas liquid via film and this is gas liquid and this is liquid solid. So, the total mass transfer gas to solid mass transfer is the combination of it can happen via the liquid film and via caps. So, via the liquid film we can have KGS, AGS directly plus uh, it can have two steps in series. It, it has two steps in series mass transfer via the caps and mass transfer from the slug to the wall. So, these two terms in series. Uh, one can remember the expressions that we developed uh, uh, for heat transfer and you can see the analogy between the two here. Now uh, these uh, because the bubbles can be approximated, uh, so one can easily get an idea of the geometries or the interfacial area densities in these cases. For example, for the AGL case where GL is the interfacial area density of the caps. So, if we say that this film thickness is delta F and length of the slug is L s and length of the bubble is L b. So, one can write G l a g l is the interfacial area of the caps and assuming that they are uh, spherical caps, so hemispherical caps. So, one can have pi d cap squared. So, let us say this channel diameter is d and the cap diameter will be d minus delta f squared per unit unit cell volume. So, unit cell volume will be pi by 4 L b plus L s d squared. So, pi pi will cancel out and we will have 4 d minus delta f squared divided by 
एल बी प्लस एल एस डी स्क्वायर इन द सेम मैनर वन कैन ऑल्सो कैलकुलेट द एरिया फॉर द लिक्विड सॉलिड सो द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द यूनिट सेल विल रिमेन सेम पाई बाई फोर एल बी प्लस एल एस डी स्क्वायर ना दिस लेंथ इज द एरिया इज टू पाई डी इन टू एल ऑफ दिस स्लग लेंथ सो एल एस प्लस इफ वी कंसिडर द एंटायर लेंथ इन दिस एज वेयर द मास ट्रांसफर इज हैपनिंग बाय लिक्विड स्लग देन वी विल हैव एल एस प्लस डी माइनस डेल्टा F and it will be two delta F because there are films on the top and bottom, so that will this will be pi d L, so two will not be there. Pi pi will cancel out and we will have uh, four L S plus d minus two delta F over L B. Plus L S into D. Similarly, one can find out the area for this film region, which is called as A G S, which will be equal to because once we get rid of this four L B plus L S D. एल बी माइनस डी माइनस टू डेल्टा एफ सो दीज आर द डिफरेंस इंटरफेसियल एरियाज दैट वी कैन नाउ वी कैन यूज अप्रॉक्सीमेशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ द फिल्म फिल्म इज वेरी थिन दैन वी कैन नेग्लेक्ट द फिल्म विद रिस्पेक्ट टू डी एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ in summary what we have looked at is obtained the uh, we we reviewed some of the basics of mass transfer look at the sum of the uh, non dimensional numbers sherwood number schmidt number uh, the definition of uh, uh, the mass transfer at the interface uh, the film the micro models say for example stagnant film model and penetration theory and uh, then we have looked at uh, the mechanism qualitatively the mechanism at the interface now in the next lecture we will try to look at different models that have been developed by researchers based on their experiments or from the fundamentals to develop the uh, to to give these uh, mass transfer for for the film region mass transfer from cap at the bubble caps from gas to liquid slug and then mass transfer from slug to the wall okay thank you